Hello and welcome back to Let's Make a Game in C++ using SDL and OpenGL. This is episode 5 and in this episode we'll finally start with some game logic and we'll start off with some basic movement. Some general info, I haven't put out a new episode for quite some time, I've been busy but I think that now the episodes will start to come out regularly, so at least two every week. So let's switch to our code. Windows user should start up their ID, Linux user should start up their favorite text editor and open up the source. As you might notice, we have learned all the basics we need to make a game. So we know how to set everything up so that we get a window and we can start working with the window. We know how the main loop works. We know that there's an event part and which part we do events like key presses and stuff like that then we have a logic part with it which is empty for now but we'll start adding this in this episode to it and we have the rendering part in which we render everything to the screen so these are the main three parts of the main loop that we need and it's also basically everything we need to make a game yeah there is also sound but I won't be covering sound in this tutorial, at least not now, maybe later when we actually make the game, we'll maybe add it. So let's get to it. First of all, where we left is here. This is our program for last time, it's a rectangle and two black lines crossing in the middle. So let's just close this and we'll delete everything we have in the drawing part so from the red color to the GL end so we only leave the push matrix the GL ortho and the pop matrix I'll just comment out everything else because we don't need it so if we compile this we get a blank white screen. So for movement we first need we're going to be moving a rectangle a small rectangle 50 by 50 pixels wide and we'll place it on the bottom of the window so somewhere here 50 by 50 pixels wide and we'll move it with the left and the right keys so when we press left it will go left and when we press right it will go right so let's start off with the drawing of the rectangle. We'll first need some variables. So before the main loop, we'll define everything we need. So after the event, let's define our variables. So we'll need an x and y coordinate, make it float, and let's say my x for the x coordinate, we'll set it to the screen is 600 pixels wide, so let's say 300 and then we need a y coordinate it will be if the screen is 400 pixels high and the rectangle will be 50 pixels high so let's make it somewhere 350 actually I'll make it 30 pixels high and then we also put a width which is going to be 50 pixels and height, height which is going to be 30 pixels and that's basically what we need to draw a rectangle we need the x and y position so that means where it starts and the width of the height let me just draw that out really quick I don't want to overcomplicate stuff but let's just make this clear so this is the let's say this is and all we need is an x and y position so we need to know how much x and how much y and then we need the width and the height of the rectangle and using those three information so that the starting point the width and the height we can draw the whole rectangle so starting point 
then the next point is starting point plus width the next point is starting point plus width and plus height and the last point is starting point plus height so that way we get all the four points for the rectangle so let's draw the rectangle and the drawing part of the program so after GL auto we reset the screen we will set the color of the rectangle so GL color for UV and we say it's going to be black so 0 0 0 2 5 5 red green blue is all 0 and alpha value is 255 so that is black color and we can already start drawing so we GL be begin and we're going to draw a rectangle so we do a GL quad and we put a GL end and now in between we have to define the four points of the rectangle so GL vertex 2F and the first point is the upper left part of the rectangle so it's my X for the X and my Y for the Y position that's pretty straightforward now the next point is the upper right corner of the rectangle so GL vertex 2F the X is the position that changes now because we move to the right so it's my X that's the top left corner plus the width of the rectangle so we get top right corner and the Y position stay the same next is the bottom right corner so GL vertex 2F the bottom right corner is my X plus width of the rectangle and the Y coordinate is my Y plus the height of the rectangle so we get the bottom right corner of the rectangle and as you might probably know by now we have the bottom left corner the X stays the same because this is the same X as this one and only the Y coordinate changes so my Y plus its height and let's compile this my Y <coughs> I probably oh yes I made a mistake it's my Y so let's compile that again and we should get a black rectangle in the bottom part of the window so this is X and Y X and Y plus width X and Y plus width and plus height and this is X and Y plus height the bottom left corner so that's basically the drawing of our rectangle which I'll refer from now on as a pad because we'll be making a breakout clone and this is the pad which is going to be used to deflect the ball as you can see we can now simply change the rectangle by changing the values of the width and height so let's make it 80 pixels wide and 20 pixels high compile and run and uh, as you can see it's now wider and it's less higher and we can also move it a little down so let's make the starting y position 270 370 compile and run and as you can see it's a little lower to the screen and I think this is pretty much the shape we want to use it's pretty wide and it should make a good sized pad for deflecting the ball so let's get to the movement part now here we have a problem because SDL only there's an event happening only when a key is pressed down and when a key is released so it only checks once so if you hold down the key the event will only happen once the key press event but it won't happen everything if we are holding down the key so we have to do some basic logic here so that we save which key has been pressed and which key has been released and for that we're going to use four boolean values 
let's just call them left and right actually two boolean values because we won't be doing up and down movement so left and right and at the start we'll set them all to false so that means that the left and right key are not pressed currently at the start and now we have to go to the event part and in here we want to check if a key has been pre pressed so we check if the event type is equal to sdl key down so an sdl key down event happens when a key has been pressed and in here we'll need other another two if sentence to check which key has been pressed so let's check if the key that has been pressed is left or if the key that has been pressed is the right key so event.key.ksim.sim is equal to sdlk under dash left so that way we check if the left key the left key has been pressed down and if it has been pressed down I'll just make it so that's more clear well if it has been pressed down we set the left boolean value to true so that means when the left the variable left which is boolean is set to true that means that the key left is pressed and we do the same thing for the right button as the key right that way we check if the right key has been pressed and as same as before we set the right boolean value to true as it means that the right key is pressed and as you have noticed if we have a key down event, we also have to check if the key has been released. So you do another if, else if is more efficient. So let's just do else if event type is equal to SDL key up. So event key up, and again we have to check which key has been released. If event dot key dot key same dot same is equal to sdlk left so if the left key has been released we set the left boolean value to false so that way the program stores that the left key is released and we'll do the same thing for the right key so event dot key dot key same dot same is equal to sdlk right for the right key and if it has been released we set the right boolean value to false so what we did now is to save whichever key is pressed if the left boolean value is set to true that means that the left key is pressed and if it's set to false it means that the key is released now that we have that saved we will have to do some logic because the pad doesn't move we only draw it to the screen using this variables my x and my y and we also say if have saved if the key is pressed but we don't change the x and y values of the pad depending if the key is pressed or not so we're going to do that in the logic part so it's just a simple if sentence if left is equal to true that means that the left key is pressed then we simply have to change the x value of the path because we want to change it move it to the left and if we want to move it to the left we have to decrease the x value so let's say that my x is minus equal 0 0.5 and we do the same thing for the right key if right is equal to true so that means if the right key is being pressed we increase the x value so that it moves right because x increments from left to right so plus equal 0 0.5 and that's the basic of move so let's compile and run as you can see the pad moves really quick even though we only increase the x value by 0 0.5 that's because the game is running at a really high speed 
not the recommended 60 frames per second but probably at around 300 frames per second basically just really high because we haven't set the, the game to pause a little every frame and we do that using an SDL delay function and we put one millisecond so one millisecond delay at the end of every frame that way will decrease the frame rate a lot so that the processor won't be using actually the program won't be using 99% of the processing power all the time so this will decrease it a lot and the frame rate will also drop so let's compile and run that and as you can see it runs a lot slower but the movement is still smooth and it has a nice speed to it uh, do keep in mind that your speed may differ depending on your configuration um, because we're doing movement that's we're basically not doing any frames per second dependent movement we're just doing basic stuff so we're not doing any calculations at how much frames per second the game runs so we would we would move it basically on different speed but depending on the frame rate so this is just the basic just put an SDL delay for one millisecond at the end so that it won't run as fast as the processor can handle it so this is actually the basic stuff but as you can see the pad moves out of the screen and we do not want that and we can change that after the logic part because after we move left or right we can check if the pad is out of the screen so if the x coordinate because that's basically the coordinate that we're moving is less than zero so zero is the left border of the screen so if, if it is less than zero then we simply set it back to zero so that way it cannot collapse compile run let's test it and it cannot go over the left border because it tries to move it actually does move over the border but this if sentence checks it and sees that the X has moved over the left border and sets it back to zero and because everything all the calculations happen before the rendering we don't see that the pad moved over the left part of the screen we only see what happens after all the logic has been done and let's do the same for the right border if my x flows width because the right border of the pad is its x position plus the width of the pad is larger then we we have 600 pixels wide screen so if it's larger than 600 then we set my x to 600 minus the width of the pad because if we would set it to 600 let's just run it it works because if we would set it to 600 then the pad would be moved just outside the border and we could not see it so we have to move it to the border minus the width of the pad so that we can see it and that's the basics of the movement so if you want to play around a little you can try to doing the same thing for up and down movement so put some boolean values for keys up and down at the events in here if uh, up key or down key has been pressed and the same goes if it has been released and you can then do basic logic here I won't be adding up and down movement because this is a breakout clone we only want it to move left and right but I will upload the code and will also add up and down movement so in comments so that you can see how that would be done it's basically almost the same you only change the movement for y position because if we move up and down we change the y position 
and the rendering is the same as we did in the last episode when we draw the rectangle and the background. And that's basically it for the basic movement. We'll be doing the basic movement of the ball next time and we'll also be doing checking collisions with the ball and the pad. So the ball is going to bounce around the screen and when it's going to hit the pad it will bounce off and it will if it will hit the bottom screen then the program will exit that's the plan for the next episode thanks for watching and good night